The GIA ID100 distinguishes natural diamonds from potentially laboratory-grown diamonds and diamond simulants. It was developed based on characteristics present in the majority of natural diamonds that are not found in laboratory-grown diamonds and diamond simulants. Please be aware that it does not distinguish between most treatments, such as HPHT processed natural diamonds. The ID100 automatically collects and analyzes a diamond's luminescence signature. It identifies natural diamonds based on the presence of those luminescence patterns and refers samples without those patterns for further testing. The instrument provides two possible results, pass and refer. If the result for a diamond is pass, pass, you can be confident it is a natural diamond and no more testing is required with the ID100. A refer result refer. indicates the diamond is potentially a simulant, laboratory grown, or one of a small percentage of natural diamonds. Before using the ID100, please read the user guide and watch this short instructional video. We hope to answer most of your questions about how to operate the ID100, the diamonds it can test, and potential trouble spots that may reduce instrument performance and effectiveness. The ID100 can test diamonds 0.9 millimeters or greater in diameter, about half a point or five one thousandths of a carat. The stones can be loose or mounted. The diamonds can be rough as well as any shape. The ID100 is intended for colorless to near colorless diamond and some hues of fancy colored diamond. Its standard software tests colorless to near colorless, D to J on the D to Z color scale, brown, and blue to green diamonds. The ID100 can test pink diamonds with the optional GIA ID100 pink diamond software upgrade. We'll describe that operation at the end of this tutorial. Please note that diamonds outside these color ranges, including yellow colored diamonds, should not be tested with this device. The ID100 distinguishes between natural diamonds and laboratory grown diamonds. It is not intended to determine treatment in diamonds. Clean the diamonds for best results. Wiping with a gem cloth is sufficient for most diamonds. If the diamond is exceptionally dirty, use soapy water or an ultrasonic cleaner with isopropyl alcohol. Use the ID100 with stable standard room lights or lower light levels. The instrument calibrates for room light levels. Turn off nearby desk lamps. Do not use the instrument outdoors. In general, the darker the ambient light, the faster the ID100 operates. Conduct the test on non-fluorescing surfaces. A dark or black background is best. Do not conduct the test around fluorescent surfaces like white paper or stone paper. A probe holder with Melly sorting tray is included with purchase. To begin, let's unpack the case and introduce each of the ID100 parts. The electric cord connects to the back of the ID100 there is one universal power adapter included. The two most important pieces are the probe and the output device. On one end of the probe are two legs that attach to the instrument. They are color-coded red and yellow. Color guides on the instrument match the input for the two legs. Insert both probe legs into the device first and then tighten them in place. Plug the yellow leg into the left side connector. Plug the red leg into the right. Be careful not to switch the two legs. The other end of the fiber probe will be placed close to the diamond. Note, no stones are included with the device to provide pass and refer results. Once the instrument is assembled, press the switch in the back to start the ID100. When the device first starts, it asks you to acknowledge that you understand the instrument's capabilities as described in the user guide. To calibrate the device to the room lights at startup, press the Calibrate button and point the probe at the test sample. 
if the light intensity is too bright, an advisory appears on screen. This provides an option to proceed to testing or dim the lights and recalibrate. Keep the light levels consistent while taking measurements. You can raise, lower, or mute the volume on the ID100. To do this, select the volume icon, then move the slider bar to adjust it. Press OK to start the volume option. Press Test to start operations. The device operates continuously once you press Test. You may hear several refers if the probe is not pointed at a diamond. To test mounted diamonds, hold the probe close to the diamond to be tested, within two millimeters. Gently touch the table of the stone with the probe. The diamond may fluoresce. This indicates that only one diamond is being tested. Hold the probe close enough to the diamond that only one diamond fluoresces. If two or more diamonds fluoresce, move the probe closer to the target diamond. Do not hold the probe at the side of mounted jewelry, as metal in the setting may interfere with testing. Aiming the probe at the metal causes a refer result. Hold the probe over the diamond being tested until you hear the pass or refer result. Do not move the probe to the next diamond until you have a result for the current stone. If the result for a diamond is pass, pass. move to the next diamond. If the result for a diamond is refer, refer, lightly shift the probe to stone angle and retest the stone to confirm the result. Pass. The instrument is designed to pass only natural diamonds. If you obtain a pass after retesting a stone from a refer result, the pass confirms it is a natural diamond and requires no further testing with the ID100. A high number of refer results while testing may indicate an issue with the environment or test method. Factors that may interfere include bright room lights, improperly cleaned stones, or an unsatisfactory probe to stone angle. The ID100 can also be used to sort through loose melee. Try these tips. Loose diamonds generally orient themselves table side down, so it's easier to test them this way. Line the melee up in a row and separate according to the result. Create a collection of past diamonds and a collection of refer diamonds. With a refer result, flip the diamond to table side up and retest to confirm the refer result. Other variations to try. Cover a rocking tray with black paper and put the loose melee in table side up for testing. Sort the melee inside a metal scoop, placing the diamonds against the sidewall of the scoop while testing. The probe is the most sensitive part of the ID100 and the part most likely to break or show reduced performance. This illustration shows the acceptable probe to stone angles, especially critical when testing loose diamonds. For mounted stones, it's best to position the probe directly over the table. You can touch the table with the probe. The most convenient position for loose diamonds is to point the probe at the pavilion. If a loose diamond gets a refer result, flip it over and retest on the table facet. Contact with sharp points can damage the probe head. Do not place the probe tip close to the culet or against other sharp edges like metal prongs. The probe is the part of the instrument most vulnerable to damage, either by excessive bending or by scratching the tip against a culet or other sharp surface. Store it in the extended position when not in use. This is ideal. When testing, the probe can be bent slightly for ease of use. Avoid bending or twisting the fiber probe. It may reduce performance and lead to probe damage. Excessive bending and twisting lowers light transmission through the probe. For best results, do not restrict the bend diameter to less than 8 centimeters or about 3 inches. This bend diameter is approximately 11 centimeters and though functional, lowers the sensitivity. This bend diameter is beyond the probe specification at about 7 centimeters. Bending the fiber beyond these limits will reduce performance and may damage the probe. Extend the probe when not in use. Do not pull the device by the legs. 
be aware that the probe can return to its extended position when set down. The device uses a UVA light source. Do not look directly at the probe. Do not use a loop or any magnifying optics with the device. Eye damage may result. Take care not to point it at your skin as well. Fingertips can fluoresce and interfere with the measurement. When testing completes, turn the device off and leave the probe in its extended position. To pack the device for shipment or storage, return the covers to the probe legs and device connectors, then repack as originally shown. With the optional GIA ID100 Pink Diamond software upgrade, the unit refers any mined diamond whose pink color comes from irradiation and heat, as well as all simulants and laboratory-grown diamonds. A small percentage of naturally colored diamonds may also be referred. After room calibration, a selection screen provides the option to test pink diamonds with the supplemental software or diamonds in other color ranges with the original software. For best results, the probe needs to contact the table of the stone and held stationary until the unit provides a result. As in the standard mode, a pass is the definitive result when a pass and a refer are given for the same stone. Pink diamonds should only be tested with the pink subroutine. Test all other colors, colorless to near colorless, brown and blue to green, with the original software. If testing a piece of jewelry with both pink and colorless diamonds, test all the colorless diamonds with the standard ID100 mode and then switch to the pink mode to test the pink diamonds. To summarize, this device can test loose or mounted, clean, colorless to near colorless, as well as brown and blue to green diamonds greater than 0.9 millimeters in diameter and of any shape. An optional ID100 supplemental software tests colored diamonds with pink to red hues. With mounted jewelry, hold the probe close enough to the diamond so that a neighboring stone does not fluoresce. It is best to touch the table of the diamond with the probe. Make sure to establish the proper environment and conditions. Bright lights or unclean diamonds will increase the refer rate. Confirm your conditions and environment first when getting a high number of referred diamonds. Pass. A pass result confirms that a diamond is natural, though it generally does not detect treatment. Refer. With the refer result, shift the probe angle slightly and test again to confirm. Refer. A refer result indicates a diamond is potentially a simulant, laboratory grown, or one of a small percentage of natural diamonds. If you have any questions about sales or service, please contact GIA using the email address or phone numbers on view.